Tail of the tape for Timothy Bradley against Diego Chavez. You see the three-year age advantage for the Argentine fighter. He's also an inch and a half taller than Bradley. There have been some photos that made it look as though the height difference was bigger than an inch and a half. Arm length, however, measures out equally from the armpit to the end of the fifth. They both were under the 147-pound limit. Interestingly, Bradley talking about going up the 154 was a full pound and a quarter under. Tonight, Bradley weighs 156 and Chavez 154 on our unofficial HBO scale. Yesterday, the two fighters weighed in at 3.30 Pacific time. So about 32 hours have now gone by since the time at which they weighed in. No, make that 29 hours. Okay, sometimes the math is wrong. Bradley, no stranger to the big fight environment. Chavez, of course, has already fought twice here in the United States, but to repeat what we said earlier, in neither of the two American episodes has he been able to win. He's undefeated in his native Argentina. We saw Diego Chavez. He's from Buenos Aires, Argentina. It sports a record of 23 and two with 19 knockouts. One of those two losses came in his last fight against Brandon Rios. He was disqualified in the ninth round with a lead on the scorecards. It was a disappointing finish to an unusually challenging fight week, highlighted by a visa issue that long delayed his rival to the United States. Oh, it was very different. You know, we arrived 48 hours before the fight, a fight that was so important as that was against Brandon Rios. But we were very confident in the work that we had put in. And I think we were superior to him uh, for a majority of the fight. Oh, another brilliant right hand by Chavez. And because of my inexperience, you know, he started getting dirty, you know, it hit me at the nape, on you know, my back. And because of my inexperience, I, I fell into that game. And that's why the fight ended up being a dirty fight. This is going to be a disqualification. You know, the attitude of the referee disqualifying me, I think it was something unjust. This fight is completely different. Bradley is a different fighter. If we have to box, we box. If we have to brawl, we brawl. If he wants a war, he's going to have a war. We're prepared for anything, anything he brings. Roy Jones. That all discussion, that discussion was about Chavez's foul-filled fight with Brandon Rios. Six times in Tim Bradley's career, his fights have been marred by head contact. He has three technical decision wins in fights where the opponent was unable to go on because of cuts caused by accidental headbutt. Is this going to be a foul-filled fight as well? Well, I don't think it'll be a foul-filled fight as well. However, if Diego Chavez decides he wants to make it that, he got the right man to make it with. Little Evander. <laughs> Chavez in the ring. Looks as though he's gotten a haircut since he left Argentina. And is very proud of his Argentine heritage. You know, we hear from a lot of the top Argentine fighters, and there have been a bunch recently. He wants to get this win and take the victory home to Argentina. Says his best friend is Marcos Maidana. Meanwhile, Timothy Bradley was quite candid about his feelings of frustration and anger with the public's reaction to his hotly disputed win in his first fight with Manny Pacquiao back in June 2012. We spoke with him earlier this week to get his take on the loss to Pacquiao in their April rematch. I felt like I needed to fight. I felt like I needed to fight because I felt like, man, you know, the first fight, you know, it was controversial. A lot of people saying, oh, you didn't win the fight. I was like, well, the judges are going to be a little bit different, I think, this time around. They're going to they're gonna really be paying attention and seeing what, what's really going on. And it's going to be really hard for me to win rounds, I'm sure. So I was like, well, you know what? I might as well go for it, because I know I'm going to get pencil whipped. More and more, Tim Bradley seems to be trying to turn this around with one big shot. I just went for the knockout. And uh, Pacquiao just you know, showed how resilient he is, how smart he is to use the experience against me. It was uh, the first half of the fight was very close, and then uh, Pacquiao pulled away at the end because uh, I got exhausted. You know, fighting at that high-level pace was, was very tough for me. So Pacquiao, like I said, he's one of the best fighters in the world. I learned a lot from it. I should have just boxed, just do, do, do what I do normally, but 
Uh, I didn't do that, and so I got to do it. I deal with the consequences, and that's an L on my resume. That's okay. It's all right. I lost to one of the best in the, in the world. Max Kellerman, in his own words, he says he fought the wrong fight against Manny Pacquiao the last time out. He says he guarantees he'll fight the right fight tonight. What is the right fight against Diego Chavez? Well, the right fight against anyone for Tim Bradley is the Tim Bradley we saw against Lamont Peterson. That Tim Bradley did whatever he had to do. He's a well-rounded boxer. He's mobile. He's not a big puncher, obviously, but he's physically strong. He's extremely tough, Brazilian. And when he had to box Peterson, he did. When he had to pressure him, he did. Diego Chavez is not really a one-dimensional fighter. He can box a little. He can slug when he has to as well. So that's the Bradley we need to see, the Lamont Peterson Bradley, who does whatever it takes in the moment. But certainly not the Provodnikov Bradley, who went in <laughs> thinking, I'm just going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this hard-headed guy and show everyone how tough I am. And under these circumstances, given the timing of the bout, coming as it does after the Pacquiao fight, everybody was saying yesterday, gee, this feels a little bit like the Provodnikov fight, and even Bradley smiled and said, yep, I can understand why people say that. So we shall see. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, this is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing in the welterweight division. And it's all brought to you by International Boxing Hall of Fame promoter, Mr. Bob Arum and his top rank incorporated, sponsored by Tecate Con Caracter. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Francisco V. Aguilar, Executive Director Robert Bennett. At ringside, the three judges scoring will be Bert Clements, Julie Letterman, and Craig Metcalf. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Tony Weeks. And now, the officials are ready. The fighters are in the ring, and they are ready. So for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, from the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue trimmed with white. Official weight, 146 one half pounds. His professional record, 23 victories, including 19 wins by knockout with only two defeats. Thomas y Caballeros de San Miguel, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Former Latino and former WBA Intercontinental Champion, Diego La Hoya Chavez. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trimmed with white. Official weight, 145, three quarter pounds. His professional record, an outstanding one also, 31 victories, including 12 knockouts, with only one defeat from Palm Springs, California, USA. Two-time world champion, former light welterweight, and former welterweight champion of the world, Timothy Desert Storm Bradley. Gentlemen, caballeros, you already received your instructions. Usted recibió instrucciones. He goes right here, it's okay. Anything below that's low. Aquí está bien, aquí no. He goes right here, it's okay. Anything below that's low. Aquí está bien, aquí no. I want a good, clean fight. Y aquí no play Olympia. Obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourself at all times. Escúchame, cuídate. Listos, ready, let's go. Diego Chavez believes that Bradley didn't look the same as he used to in his last fight against Pacquiao, which he was, which he was official loser. Tim Bradley, for his part, says he's going to box smart. When I asked him, "What if Chavez tags you, trying to turn it into a good fight?" and Tim Bradley said, "Then let's go." Outstanding referee Tony Weeks in charge. Diego Chavez comes out and fires away with a right hand over the top. 
Bradley slipped it. <laughs> He's trying to walk Bradley down right away. So you know what this might turn into if he hits Bradley with one of those big right hands. He clipped him with the right hand. <laughs> Diego has some skills from distance. He's awkward, but he manages to get his punches off. But he did a really good job of fighting a good fight with a guy in Brandon Rios, who's probably one of the toughest inside guys that there has ever been to fight. Chavez was effective for the first few rounds against Keith Thurman. Ultimately, Thurman wore him down, partially with good body shots. Bradley's a dedicated body puncher when he knows he needs to do it. Bradley trying to stick to the game plan and box right now. And doing a good job of it. Because Chavez's right hands are sailing over his back and he's defending Chavez's offense well so far. That time Chavez landed the right hand. And Chavez got some really good counter punches. Both of them have quick hands. That's part of what makes the matchup interesting. Up and under for Chavez. Good over the right, right and the left. And good overhand right by Brett. That's not always the best thing for Bradley. He did the same thing to Provodnikov early, got a little too bold and got caught. Yeah, but I don't know if this guy gonna take what Provodnikov took. Bradley lands a solid jab on Chavez. Moving side to side. As Chavez, Chavez is right hand hunting for sure. Stop, stop, stop. He's, yep. got, he's got power on the mind. Yeah, he does, but that overhand right from Bradley has slowed him down a little bit. Yep. Bradley's Good best. body shots by Bradley there. Bradley's best when he's doing that. Getting his shots off, getting out, coming back in, boxing, moving, avoiding counters, and but he can be dragged into tough toe-to-toe -to -toe fights. That was the way he beat Juan Manuel Marquez. Managing the distance, getting in and out, beating Marquez to the punch stop, with his stop, jab. Stop. Compu box numbers at the bottom of the screen. Both fighters into double figures here in an active first round. Job is just missing with the uppercut. And Tim showing some really good defensive moves early. Bradley looks sharp in round one. There's his manager, Monica Bradley, pregnant with their fifth child. Actually, it'll be their third, but the fifth because they raised together two children of hers from a previous relationship. He's trying to just wait, 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 wait. He's trying to counter you in everything you do. So you know that for the counter, you gotta execute with your counter. Okay? Doing a great job moving, great fucking angle. You know that the key is to stay low and yes, ma'am. Hey, always, always keep on the chain. Tim, you don't know what the hell to do. Okay? He see Bradley get low after that box shot and a good overhand right to high on the head of Chavez. Had that shot landed on the chin, we may have seen a little bit of a different reaction. Best punch of the round, CompuBox numbers in round one. Bradley 15 out of 43 for a solid percentage of 35%. Chavez was a little wild, 11 out of 64. And so far, even when Chavez has landed, except for a couple times stop, 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 when Tim stop. Bradley we went down, Chavez caught him coming in with an uppercut. Bradley's been turning and taking the sting off the punches. Still oh, good guys body digging work. hard to the body here in round two. Oh, headbutt. Headbutt. Hold on, hold on. Time, time. Come here, come here. You're good. You're both good. Good. You're both coming in with your heads watching. Here we go. Time in. Let's go. That time Bradley got the worst of it. Usually it's the other way around. <laughs> and this is with an, another orthodox fighter, not a southpaw. It's not that Bradley shouldn't be on the inside, because as I said against Lamont Peterson, sometimes he pressured Peterson and got on the inside and did his work. It's that he shouldn't stay in there too long. 
And that's where I think that head push just made him realize. Come on, and their heads come together come on, a second watch time. Watch Both on it. This time it's Chavez who thinks he got the worst of it. He did because he has a knot on the front come of his head come now. Come here. Come here. Now Tony Weeks is going to have a conversation. Both coming in with your heads. Yeah, cuidado, cabeza. There's a slight cut. Come okay, on. it's okay. It's okay. Here we go. Time in. Let's go. And Tim Bradley had his big 140-pound showdown with Devin Alexander in January of 2011 at the Silver Dome. That fight was badly marred by persistent head contact between the two fighters, and ultimately, Alexander couldn't continue. Bradley landing a huge right-hand shot over the top. Chavez takes it very well. And Bradley got a big sweater under the left eye from yeah. that first head part as well. Sometimes Bradley swings his head, and I get the feeling that it's intentional, not in this fight. They're both getting hit in the face, and and neither guy likes it. And Diego Chavez has a cut over his right eye now from the head, but from exactly the second right. Head both fighters marked by headbutts in round two. Bradley just got a big head. And opponents would say a hard one. Meantime, Tim Bradley doing real work in this round, really beating Chavez up. him off a little bit. Yeah, but Chavez has found something. He should <laughs> stick with that rhythm jab. He should quit firing these huge right-hand shots he's been trying to land and stick with that jab and work it. Stop, stop, stop. Here we go. I wonder go. if Tim's vision being impaired by the swelling may be leading to more success from Chavez's left hand. Lead right hand for Chavez. Another new idea. Tim come in, threw it right to the body, and was about to throw another hook to the body, and they collided. Neither guy tried intentionally, I don't think, as Max said earlier. Second one, he came in and threw another right hook to the body, which caused almost the same identical head, but it's got a big head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Max, don't be talking about my friend. Watch Our punches out. in round two. Bradley, 14 out of 31. Chavez, 9 of 27. Most of Chavez's power shot lands. We're in the last minute of the round. Bradley comes out aggressive in round three. And hurt Chavez with a left hook. Yes, he did. Hurt him bad with a left hook. And this is the danger zone for Bradley. Stop, stop. He shakes me, a, a rugged fighter up. He has real success on the inside, so he stays in there to dole out more punishment and starts taking some in return. A la the Provodnikov fight. Of course. Both guys worried about the other one fighting a dirty fight. And we've had two bad headbutts, and they've Both affected each Both guy. Let's go. And neither one wants it. I, I, they're not trying to be dirty. They said three now. Three headbutts, that is. Well, they both came in flinging themselves around like whirling dervishes in the first round. Been a tremendously high energy level at the beginning of the fight. They are simply a little bit out of control, and that's what led to all the head contact in round two. Oh, good left hook by Bradley. Yeah, it was. He's targeting that left hook. And doing a great job with it. Bradley has a way of winging arm punches. He's not a big puncher, but he, when he throws that right hand incorrectly, he seems to generate more power by doing it. He did it against Pacquiao early in the fight. When you say incorrectly, you're referring to the fact that when the glove travels for a long distance in the air on a winged roundhouse shot, like it actually one. loses speed. Right. 
and, you, and the fighter doesn't put their body behind it, it's only their arm. It's the six-inch straight right hand that has the most power, even though the spectator can't see that nearly as well as the roundhouse shot. But maybe not for Tim Bradley. He's throwing a really good hook tonight as well, though. Tim Bradley is. Yeah, generating more power than we yes. used to see it. Putting his body into stop, it. Stop, 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 stop. Let's take a listen now to Tim Bradley's high desert trainer, Joel Diaz, former professional fighter. Don't let him set, Tim. Don't let him set, baby. Let's go. Fighter marriages that just works in every way. And there's Terrence Crawford at ringside, former sparring partner of Tim Bradley's, knows him very well. Hey, I need One you to try One of the calmest on fighters now. in the world, Tim Bradley, even when something. sitting at ringside try watching a fight. Crawford. I mean, uh, excuse me, Terrence Crawford. Okay. Yeah. You fucking winning the fight. Hey, and you landed the overhand right again. Okay? Relax, baby. Come on. Keep your composure and relax. I know. You got Diego. Box him a bit more, Diego. And be, look more alive. Come on. Relax a little bit more. But really, careful because he changes his speed. All right? So you got to be careful so you don't get some, get a surprise. Keep your hands up and your guard up. This run was much better, right? Much better this Roy, run. it's amazing yeah. how much of the swelling has been eliminated from Diego Chavez's right eye by Miguel Diaz's hard work with the end swell. It shows you that metal instrument really works. It does work, and Miguel Diaz is one of the best cut guys in the world when it comes to keeping that swelling down. And by the way, he's from Argentina. Harold, how do you have it so far? Okay, Jim, I got a three to nothing, 30 to 27, Timothy Bradley. You know, Jim, Timothy Bradley's got a style that reminds me of a band of Holyfield. Come on, no, no, no. His head. Let's go. He's always out in front of him. I mean, all you gotta do is watch these two guys. His head is always out in front of his body. No doubt about it. Just like Amanda used to do. That's why Amanda was in headbutt fights all the time. When Bradley moves in, he causes a headbutt. He is a big Bradley with the more clean stop, shots. Stop, stop. Three to nothing, Timothy Bradley. Well, here's one more similarity to Evander Holyfield. He's landing his on, left hook with regularity tonight. He sure is. And in this round, I thought Diego Chavez no. moments ago no landed an uppercut, and I felt that it stop, had stop, a stop, different stop. kind of effect on Bradley than the punches have had so far. We're at the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Las Vegas, the beautiful Chelsea Theater. Sold out for this main event between Diego Chavez in the blue trunks with white trim and Timothy Bradley in the red. It's the third fight on this HBO World Championship boxing triple header. In the first fight, Jose Benavides Jr. got what we expect is going to be seen as an extremely controversial decision over Mauricio Herrera, who seemed to have outboxed Benavides in the fight. And in the second fight, Andy stop, stop, Lee stop, stop, stop. trailing on all scorecards in the sixth round against Matt Koroba produced yet another Andy Lee come from behind miracle with a Hail Mary right hook that put Korobov into stop, stop. next week. And Lee was able to jump on him and rain punches stop, stop, until stop. Kenny Bayless stopped the fight. So Lee now has the middleweight title belt. Boy, this is turning into a phone booth, not, you know, real tough inside fight. And Timothy Bradley is landing some real body shots in this fight for the first time. I have ever seen him throw body shots with this much velocity on him. Look at him. He is ripping that body tonight, so. Well, Bradley built himself as a harder puncher than before coming in, saying he's worked hard in camp to develop more strength, hitting the heavy bag a lot, trying to develop greater punching power, and it certainly looks early on as though these shots have more impact than we've seen before. Much more. Bradley using his physical strength to push and keep Chavez on the ropes and then deploying some of that newfound power. 
What a busy round. 30 seconds stop, to go. Stop, stop, and they stop, both stop. landed more than 20 punches. Bradley's going to wind up with more than 30 connects in the round. Stop, stop, stop. Bradley might think it's safer for him in there because his vision could be affected by that closing left eye. I think he's getting the better of it inside. He is. December 27 begins a four-night run of boxing's best of 2014. And each night, we'll replay some of the best and most significant fights of the past year. Join us to see names like Pacquiao, Golovkin, Kovalev, Koto, Klitschko, many more, including Terrence Crawford, whom you saw at ringside just a little while ago. And live here tonight in the Chelsea Theater, Miguel Cotto in town to discuss future business with promoter Top Rank. And very near him, Gennady Golovkin. So you have the lineal middleweight champion, Cotto, and the people's middleweight champion, Golovkin, both seated at ringside here tonight. What a tremendous fight that would be. And a new middleweight titleist now in the dressing room, Andy Lee. Probably thinking, okay, do I want Cotto or do I want Golovkin? Power in round four. Bradley, 33 out of 65. He's hot tonight. Diego Chavez, 23 out of 56. That's not bad. Only one combined jab landed in the round out of 12 thrown. And that goes to what the guys were saying earlier. Phone booth fight. Rough, tough, inside contact, big punches. Both fighters fighting the same way. Very close fight inside. It was what we like when they're together, they're trading. Each guy's parrying, throwing, parrying, knocking punches off. I mean, this is good boxing. Which one should step stop, back stop. and consider establishing a jab? Uh, Diego Chavez should, because Timothy Bradley no, no, is landing no, no, stop, the bigger stop. and better shot, so he's not getting the best of it on the inside. Maybe he should try something else. Is he in too deep to do that? Is uh, he already committed too much to this kind of fighting? Yeah, I think he's far too deep to do that. Actually, I think both of them are in far too deep to do that. Because if either one backs off now, it will be conceded as though he's giving ground. So even though it might be the right thing to do tactically, psychologically, it feels like a setback. Psychologically, it would be horrible for the other guy. Because now I feel like you couldn't take it. The fire got too hot in the kitchen, so you bailed out. You try to go to the bathroom. Stop, stop, stop. Kind of ignores the standard dictum that the jab is the best punch in boxing. Well, it is, but when you start a fight like this, it's like they tell you, don't get in a fight like this if you don't want to finish it. This is a great inside fight, guys. Exactly. These guys are landing some just tremendous, tough shots downstairs on the Stop. inside. Bradley getting the better of it, but Chavez taking it and firing back. And for the moment, Tony Weeks has gotten control of the headbutt contest. All of a sudden, Tim Bradley thinks he's uh, Julio Cesar Chavez in the Rosario fight. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Uh, Chavez's left eye seems to be closing a little bit. And so is Tim. Oh, the walk away right hand, the little Jersey Joe Walcott. Looking back over the shoulder to, to see it, it land. Brilliant. Good jab by Bradley. And maybe Chavez is giving some consideration to the idea of stepping back and establishing a jab. As he at least tries a couple, Bradley swinging away. Tim's gotten the worst for the wear in the headbutt department, in my opinion. But I do think his vision is affected for a change. Up the road, Tim. Hey, Tim. Listen to me. Are you tired? Yeah. Okay, let's fucking, let's wake up a little bit. I want to see some spark in you. Stay active with the dad, Tim. Tim. Hey, you, you're supposed to know now where your safe zone is, okay? You already got him down. But the thing is this, hey, when you get inside, you gotta work. One, two, three to the body, and then stay low, stay low. That overhand, 
you fucking shooting it really nice and it's landing. Okay? I need you to keep digging to that body, Tim. Okay? Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Here you see Tim Brad at first you see another headbutt to the chin, but it wasn't too effective. Then you see that big overhand right again. Once again, though, high on the top of the head. If that punch is a little bit lower, maybe three inches lower, we may see different results from it. And though Thomas was late turning his head away from the punch, he managed to turn it just enough to take a little of the impact off. Just enough. Round six of a scheduled 12. You can see that Harold Letterman has scored each of the first five rounds for Timothy Bradley. Chav is trying as hard as he can and landing some good shots. But there's just a whole lot of Bradley in the ring tonight. Well, Tim's coach talked to me doing exactly what you said, Jim. Back out a little bit and use that jab a little bit more now. You're ahead on, on the cards. You don't have to stay there and fight so close or get in, where you be in the range or be in the distance to cause that hit. But so you can stay out, box safely and smarter now because you have a lead. Again, I stop, wonder stop, what his stop, vision stop, is out stop. of that lead eye. And, and Diego Chavez, even though, the, you know, you think, well, Here's a case where maybe the taller fighter, Chavez, wants to be on the inside. He has success from the outside. He's done this in his career, too. He can be effective from long range. And if Bradley's having a hard time seeing the punches coming, maybe inside is best for him. this action and as terrific as Bradley is I think you have to be skeptical about the proposed move to 154 pounds he's had one knockout in his last 14 fights he's landing hellacious shots on a guy who was knocked out by Keith Thurman that was a fall not a knockdown I just don't know whether 154 is a good choice for Bradley with his absence of knockout punching power he's got functional punching power just not knockout punching power. That's one, wait. that's one of the reasons he may get a shot at a 154-pound money fight because he's seen as not threatening because there's not the punching power. He'll be smaller, uh, l less reach, etc. But stop, stop. Tim Bradley doesn't go out soft. I mean, it, he's not an easy fight for anybody. And it all depends on who's the 154-pound champion at the time because there are sometimes guys with belts who are also not big punchers. Well, I think maybe the target is Miguel Cotto at 154 pounds. Well, I don't know. He's a big puncher, but he would have to hit Tim. And who knows whether Cotto's going to fight at 154 again, given that he is the lineal middleweight champion of the world. But it's certainly an option that we'd be available to Cotto, who's still seen by most as a naturally smaller fighter than 160. This Tuesday, don't miss a special year-end edition of Real Sports. Join Brian Gumbel and the correspondents as they look back at their favorite moments and stories from 2014. Immediately following Real Sports, stay tuned for the premiere of the HBO Sports documentary, Tapia. Follow the Vita Loca of Johnny Tapia, who overcame almost insurmountable odds to become a great champion. An inspiring and ultimately heart-wrenching story. Relax, relax, and lead with that shot, all right? Cross that right, all right, Diego? You're doing very good, very good. You're very good, very relaxed, good. You're very relaxed, you good? Buffies, relax, dude, and don't be, care and be careful. I'm just amazed at what Miguel Diaz accomplished with the hematoma over Diego Chavez's right eye. Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim, I got a 59-55, uh, five rounds to one, Timothy Bradley. Uh, that round six I gave to uh, Diego Chavez. I just thought Bradley took a round off. He didn't do a heck of a lot. No, stop, stop, stop. Yeah, no, 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 no. Chavez, no, no. he's so tough, he just keeps on punching. But be as it may, I thought Bradley really did well in the first five rounds. Landed that right hand over the top, the left jab. 
you know, fighting real well on the inside. So I've got it five runs to one, 59, 55, Timothy Bradley. And Jim, one last comment. I think he's way too small to be a junior middleweight. I can't imagine Timothy Bradley fighting Canelo Alvarez. Chavez had his best round and on the inside coming into the fight you figure maybe Bradley doesn't want to be there too much even though he's the shorter guy but situations change and styles mesh in a certain way and maybe the best place for Bradley Stop. I'm gonna button the 154 pound conversation with one final comment if enough observers at ringside like myself and Harold Tell Tim Bradley he can't do it. That's going to dramatically increase the chance that he's going to want to do it. <laughs> it's your wheel. Because that's a boxer for you. That's the kind of guy he is. We want to do exactly what they say we can't do. You know, of course he looks too small, and it would, he'd be the underdog. And that's one of the... But he's a big name. He's been through some cycles of pay-per-view promotion and would seem to represent, for some of those big names at 54, the chance to earn a paycheck against a credible opponent who doesn't pose as much of a risk as maybe some others. Except that he has a huge heart. And Bradley's not, banking not, on them thinking that way. He's got a hundred and, he's got a heavyweight heart. You better believe it. Box numbers through round seven. Bradley 138 out of 343. 40% is a very high connect percentage. Chavez 100 out of 355. And 28% is not a particularly high connect percentage. Bradley's outlanded Chavez in every round but one. By CompuBox count. And Bradley's showing some great defensive moves tonight. You see him flipping punches. You see him stepping over, trying to counter punches after he makes the guy miss. Really good stuff from Bradley tonight. Like this. He knows how and when to get low. Good right lead by Shabu. Stop, stop. I just like Bradley's defense better on the inside tonight. The only time I see Chavez really landing clean shots to the head is from a distance. Yeah, but I think his trainer told him not to stand there and trade with Chavez. So I think he's trying to listen to Joel Diaz tonight. Make a habit of sticking to the envelope, sticking to the game plan. Stop, 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 stop. 
the finances tonight. Official numbers from the Nevada State Athletic Commission demonstrate Tim Bradley getting a paycheck from the promoter for $2 million. The fee for the fight, part of a contract extension deal that Bradley negotiated with top rank within the past couple of years. Official numbers from the commission say that Chavez is only being paid $35,000. But there are other ways for a fighter to be compensated outside of just what the promoter pays from LiveGate and American television. The fight is being carried on Argentine television. We make the assumption that Chavez will be getting some of his income from the fight from that source. Still, there's big incentive from Diego Chavez, who knows that Tim Bradley is considerably more well-paid oh. for this enterprise than he is. And there's one of the reasons why, as Bradley lands another crisp right hand. <laughs> and that's, that's what Bradley can do from the outside. That's part of what Joel Diaz wants to see him do. That's the most effective I've seen him from the outside since early in this fight. Not letting Chavez plant his like feet, that. getting in and out. Right hand over the top for Bradley. That's the type of boxer Joel Diaz wants to see. Hit and not get hit. That's the definition of professional boxing. In case you wonder whether stamina is a big factor in boxing, look at how Bradley never stops moving. Constantly moving on his feet. Now is the moment, now is the moment, man. Get your batteries on. This is our fight now. This is our moment. This is a moment to change the speed and focus on it, all right? With everything now. Put your balls into it, man. You gotta put your balls in, but you gotta go in with all. Good defense, all right? Get her in there, fucking tighten up your fist. Okay. And it's over. Once you land the fucking right hand with a tight fist, that fucking fight is over. Yeah. Let's go, baby. Okay, take a deep breath. Do you see Timothy Bradley use that jab from distance to set up a good overhand right? Jab to the body, beautiful overhand right. High on the top of the head again, but it was a wonderful shot. And once again, I mean, straight down the pipe. Two inches lower, and that fight, that, that punch may end the fight. And then he ducks, slips, and turns away to avoid the counter punch. Very good punch. So Diaz wants a tighter fist from Bradley, believing that stop, stop, stop. wherever that punch yeah, well. is landing, if his fist is tighter, he can score a knockout with it. Fist tighter and just about an inch and a half to two inches lower. Good body shot by Tim Bradley. That would be an amazing feather in Tim Bradley's cap if he could knock out Diego Chavez, who's a rugged guy, and Tim Bradley has never scored a knockout over a world-class opponent with something left in the tank at welterweight. Punching power, still to a certain degree, one of the great mysteries of the sport. A guy like Timothy Bradley, solidly built, bulging muscles, looks as though he ought to be knocking people out. Stop, stop. No, Doesn't no, 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 often no. flash knockout power. Andy Lee came into the ring looking skinny. Knocked Matt Korobev silly with one shot. All about the know-how. But Bradley is punching much better than I've ever seen him punch before tonight. Yes. And it, was, it started with the Provodnikov fight, I think, where he was landing some hard shots in that fight and carried over to the Pacquiao fight, landed some hard shots early, and this, I agree with you, is the hardest I've seen him punch, certainly as a welterweight. And he just took a great right hand, by the way. And all of this becomes a compliment to young Keith Thurman, who was able to knock Chavez out. But Thurman, for a very young fighter, has a beyond his years understanding of how to build up the body punishment no, no, stop, to set stop, up stop, stop, stop. knockouts. And he's a puncher. And he's a puncher. A real puncher. Even though he looks a little bit thin sometimes for his weight class. No, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop. Here we go. So far, this fight is good, tough work for Tim Bradley, but that's 
call it is. It's good, tough work. But that's the definition of Tim Bradley. Well, at the end of the day, despite Chavez's perfect record in Argentina, you don't have to watch more than nine, ten rounds here, or what you've seen so far, to see the difference in skill level. Tim Bradley is a more skillful fighter. By far. Chavez, one of his better punches in the whole fight because Bradley was planted and facing him December 23. It's the next edition of the fight game. Join me along with Max Kellerman and Michelle Beadle as we close out the 2014 boxing season with our annual awards and the final word on the year that was. December 23, the fight game. You've got to win an amateur fight now. It's like an amateur fight. You've got to win the three rounds and win the fight. That's all you got to do. Okay. Come on. You've had you heard it. Focus. Get around, okay? I need you to stay smart. Put up, coach, because they don't give me no time to work here. Hold on. Mm -hmm. I need some time to work here. Chat. You got to keep digging the body, baby. Don't get fucking records in there. Don't drop your defense. Okay. Don't play around. Get well, you heard Diego Chavez's brother Ismail telling him in the corner, this is like an amateur fight. All you have to do now is win three rounds and you'll win the fight. Harold Letterman's scorecard says, uh-uh. Tell us, Harold. <laughs> okay, Jim, I got a seven stop, rounds stop, stop. to two. 88, 83, Timothy Bradley. You know, Jim, Diego Chavez is a very tough guy. When he fought Keith Thurman, he took some tremendous shots, and eventually, I believe that Keith Thurman caught him with a living shot. Because, you know, it was one of those shots to the body, no, no, and then no, no, it was no, like no. a delayed knockdown, and he couldn't get up because all the wind got taken out of him when Thurman landed that living shot. Bradley's been bagging the body all night. Chavez is just standing there taking it. He's a very, very tough guy, but be it be as it may, Bradley outworking him, outpunching him, landed the better shots. Seven to two, Timothy Bradley. Side of his face really starting to swell up now on his cheek. Yeah, that, that was from that first hit, but in round two, both fighters were marked by headbutts in round two. Thank goodness we haven't seen many more since then. I think Tony Weeks gets credit for some of that. He's done a remarkable job of being vigilant and imposing himself on the action when necessary. And I think both fighters became more conscious of it because Peter Guy wanted it. <laughs> Diego Chavez, maybe you want to try moving to your right into that eye where Bradley's going to find it very hard to see punches coming. He just landed a good straight right hand there, too. More natural for an orthodox fighter to circle to his left, but Chavez may want to switch that up. in the triple head of the main event between Diego Chavez and Tim Bradley it was preceded by a lightning thriller in the middleweight bout between Matt Korobov and Andy Lee which had a sudden and shocking ending. What I say, you must obey. Korobov dominated the first five rounds. Then came round six. Andy Lee once again rescuing his career with a right hook out of nowhere just as he did in June against John Jackson in New York City and just like that 
Lee fulfilled Emmanuel Stewart's prophecy of a long time ago that he could win a middleweight title. Oh, you're good, you're good. All right, perfect. The speed, speed, and touch him up. Get points. Come on. You see when he's pushing? Cross him. Cross him with that right. You understand? Come on, you fag. Power shots through 10. Bradley 133 out of 300. Chavez 94 out of 278. Bradley with the bigger numbers. Most likely with a significant lead on the scorecards. And now a low blow. Listo. Okay. 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 Yeah, keep him up. Listo. Okay, here we go. Time in. Let's go. Keep him up. You wonder why Tony Weeks is chosen as the referee for this bout. Point one is he's an outstanding referee, definitely one of the best in the entire world of boxing. Point two, Chavez speaks no English. Tony Weeks speaks fluent Spanish. So he is exactly the right guy for a situation like this. Could have been a difficult fight to referee. He's made it professional work. Tony Weeks refereed maybe the most difficult and challenging round for a referee in recent years, the 10th round of Corrales versus Castillo. Their unbelievable match. The greatest stop, stop, fight stop, I've ever stop. seen. There we go, there we go. And if you're wondering why we say it was a remarkable job for a referee to get through that 10th round, just go to YouTube and check it out. You'll see it all. Jeff Bradley doing some good lateral movement going left and right. Sipping some good punches. Diego throwing a good right hand at him, but he's dealing with it either with his hands or he's slipping it to the left or the right. And he's continuing to go side to side so he doesn't allow Chavez the opportunity to back him straight back and hit him with that long right hand. Bradley started out the fight boxing effectively. Moved on the inside, pushed Chavez back, got the better of a real good inside, tough inside fight for four or five rounds, and then got back outside and is boxing effectively again. And widening his lead, most likely. Despite the fact that his left eye would appear at this point to be pretty much functionally closed. Pretty much. Certainly, you think the peripheral vision, as swollen as it is on the side, would be nothing. But Chavez has not been consistently trying to take advantage of that by moving in that direction. Chavez was lucky that he caught a hard head button round two, but his vision has not been adversely affected. He lands a straight right hand there. Two of them. Yep. Boxing effectively from long range. Stop, stop. No, 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 no. Ah. One round to go. That's wrong, baby. Take a deep breath. Come on. We're going to start. We're going to start fresh again. Okay? Last round, baby, okay? Walk his ass down this fucking round, okay? okay. Dude, you gotta fucking take some risk. Okay. Go ahead, okay? Right, right, go ahead. You gotta go to the body from the beginning, right. okay? Don't give him the distance, because he wants to land that fucking right hand. Okay. You got this shit? Yeah. Okay. You're not tired? Nah. You're not tired, are you? Nah. Diego, you can't see your right, Diego. His eyes are closed, you can't see it. You saw what you're doing, move back in and out. It was perfect, keep doing it. Champ, focus on this one, all right? Breathe. This is the last round. Oh, good? Good. Come on, dude. Stop it. Come on, win it. Don't give it away. I've seen a lot of implements used to treat swelling in the corner. I don't know if I've seen the bean dip can before. <laughs> Here we go. It is a different one. But Joel Diaz, extremely respected trainer, using that bean dip can. Maybe next week we'll see a lot of fighters with him. 
No, no, stop, stop, stop. No, 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 no. Using no, the no, more no. traditional end swell, that man Miguel Diaz did a fabulous job stop, over stop, Diego Chavez's right eye throughout stop, stop, the course of the fight. You heard Joel Diaz say to Tim Bradley, dude, need to take some risks stop, stop, stop. in this round. You know, they... It sounded like Diaz felt this is close on the cards, and he wanted Tim to walk him down, walk Chavez down. In Diego Chavez's corner, they were emphatic about trying to take advantage of the left eye. And he just landed a right hand on that left eye. Stop, stop, stop. Smoke him, smoke him. left eye beginning to get that Hasim Rahman in Atlantic City look. You know, Harold has Bradley up five points, and I get that. I agree. But if one or two quieter rounds went the other way, that's actually a four-point swing, and then it's a one-point fight. Because instead of Bradley being up 10-9, it would reverse. Well, that's probably why Diaz feels the need to be emphatic about closing things out. Okay, come on. Because he still has a chance to win it on the cards. Yeah, Diaz doesn't want to take any chances. He's probably right. Stop, stop, stop. Boxing judges, and we criticize them from time to time, but they have a very difficult job. They score on the fly. They don't have replay. They don't have CompuBox numbers. They don't have Roy Jones sitting next to them. Max Kellerman sitting next to them. Right, and they don't fall into groupthink, as it's possible that we do sometimes, because we're talking about the fight with a couple of people. And they see the fight only from one angle, <clears throat> in a stationary position on their side of the ring. Sometimes when the action is across the ring, their vision can be blocked by the referee or by the fighter whose back they're watching while he does work against the opponent along the ropes. It's not easy. As Harold would say, be that as it may, I think Tim Bradley won this fight. Be that as it may. Monica Bradley at ringside while Tim's mother prays. Bradley and Chavez bowing to each other. Harold, what is your official, <laughs> or unofficial, I should say, final score? Jim, I got a 116-112, eight rounds to four, Timothy Bradley. He boxed a very, very nice fight. Use that right hand over the top. Use that left jab. Uh, I thought he piled up enough points early. Uh, Diego Chavez certainly took advantage of Bradley's swollen left eye, and I thought he pulled out rounds 11 and 12 to make it a little bit closer. But Bradley had too big an early lead. 116, 112, Timothy Bradley, no matter what my daughter says. And who are the judges, Harold? And oh. now that we know that one of them is your daughter. There you go. Okay, so Bert Clemens, rep. Really veteran Nevada judge at Floyd Mayweather over Marcos Spadana in the first fight. I thought he had it right. Julie Letterman, well, best judge of my house. Uh, Juan Manuel Marquez over, uh, my, uh, no, yeah, uh, Marquez over Alvarado, 117-109. Uh, I easy, thought she had that Easy right. to score. Yeah. Craig Metcalf, very interesting. I think he's the best judge in Canada, Jim. Really, really good judge from Calgary. Uh, he, he had uh, Manny Pacquiao over Timothy Bradley in the second fight, 116-112. I won't argue with that one. You had Diego Chavez winning four of the last seven rounds. You had Tim Bradley winning the first five. If a couple of official judges saw Chavez winning a couple of rounds among the first five, maybe it's closer than we think. Let's find out from Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas, we go to the scorecards.
Julie Letterman scores at 116 to 112 for Chavez. Bert Clemens scores at 115, 113 for Bradley. And Craig Metcalf scores it. 114, 114, a three-way split. This contest officially is a draw. Well, a draw is not a win, but to a certain degree, Diego Chavez finally catches a break in America. As Julie Letterman defies her father's expectations by seeing the fight for Chavez by eight rounds to four. And as we said, it's not an easy job. And now Tim Bradley is saddled with a draw instead of a win against Diego Chavez. A draw and a badly swollen left eye as well. Wow. We've seen some unusual stuff here tonight. Very unusual. And those are the Argentines chanting Diego, Diego, Diego. Final CompuBox numbers. Bradley by CompuBox count, landing 73 more. Judges don't see this. Throwing only two more, landing at a significantly higher connect percentage. Power shots. Bradley landing 38 more, throwing 20 more, landing at a significantly higher percentage. It's an advantage you have sitting at home. Copy box numbers, it's an advantage we have sitting at ringside. The judges don't have that vehicle. Copy box punch zone showing the punches landing on Bradley. Job is only 58 body shots. Most of his landed punches upstairs. Bradley evenly mixed, 122 to the head, 103 to the body. So even though he landed 73 more punches by copy box count, it winds up in the eyes of the judges a draw with one judge, one of the most respected judges in the world, seeing Chavez as the winner of eight rounds. And now Max Kellerman stands by with Tim Bradley. Tim, good tough fight. What did you think about the decision? I thought the decision was horrible, but you know, hey, I'm not a judge, man. I thought I won the fight clearly. Uh, I, I give maybe four rounds, maybe five and max if that, but uh, for the most part, I felt like I controlled the action. I was landing the cleaner punches. Uh, I felt like I won the fight. But. That's how we felt ringside. Um, first round, you were boxing. There were a couple of head butts. Man, it, it, they looked unintentional from both yeah, sides. They were. But then you moved to the inside for the next four or five rounds, and it was tough, but you seemed to be winning. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, that was just uh, the strategy of mine. Uh, I listened to my corner, and my corner told me to uh, close the gap on him, to try to wear him down a little bit because he was really, uh, he was in really good condition for this fight. So uh, that's why I stepped inside, smothered him, landed my shots, body shots, just trying to get to his body to slow him down. Then you moved back to the outside. Why? Uh, moved back to the outside because uh, then he started wearing down, then I, I could be able to land counters on him because I'm quicker. How much vision did you have in that left eye? When did it... When did, was it impaired and how much? Well, I mean, there was a lot of headbutts early on, and then, um, you know, he landed a couple of good right hands on the top of my eye. I felt it. It was uh, solid right hands. It just, you know, improved the swelling. And... Could you see out of the left eye? I can see. I can see you. It's fine. You look good. Nice beard. <laughs> What's next steps for you? Uh, next step, man, just go back, talk, talk to, uh, you know, my manager, my wife will sit down and we'll see what's next, man. I, like I said, I felt like I won the fight clearly, but, you know, hey, the judges saw it a different way. Ain't nothing I can do about it. We were talking ringside about the possibility of you moving up to 154 pounds, where you would be giving up a lot of size. It even seems as though you give up some size at welterweight. Is that a possibility? Uh, you know what? It is all, everything is a possibility, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm gonna go back, go back to the drum board, you know, talk to my coaches, talk it over with my coaches, uh, critique what we did here tonight. Um, and that's it. I mean, I wasn't tired during the fight. I just felt a little, little flat in spots, but, uh, you know, I'll get better. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Diego, what do you think about the decision? No, fue una pelea muy, muy pareja. Creo que, que fui superior en muchos pasos de la pelea. I think it was a pretty even fight, but I felt I was superior in many instances in the fight. Ringside, we felt that he was winning, and we felt that he scored enough to win the fight. What was your impression in the later rounds? Did you think that you needed to come on? You won the last two rounds unofficially on our Harold Letterman's card. 
Did you feel that you needed to come on late in the fight? Sí, necesitaba esa intensidad porque sabíamos que la pelea era pareja. Yes, Pero I think we needed that intensity because we felt the fight was even. Creo que íbamos bien y bueno, nos faltó un poquito para para llevarnos la victoria para Argentina, pero quedamos muy conformes con el trabajo. But I think you know we just need a little bit more to take the victory back home to Argentina, but we're very confident with the work that we put in. Thank you.